Uh, welcome aboard the ship. Welcome aboard the 100th cruise of Fishing Without Bait, a lifetime without definitive expectations. We flapped our wings 100 times and landed here in uh, Mike Sorg's studio. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by three like-minded people, and we're going to have a bit of an electric eclectic conversation concerning a number of topics. However, as there are many roads to a city, we all end up at the same place, and I believe that's what will happen today. And today I'm joined by uh, three lovely young ladies, both inside and out, and if you don't introduce yourself by your first name, should you choose, that'd be grand. Um, my name is Robin. Hi, Stephanie. And I'm Taylor. <laughs> Right, and we had this previous discussion a little bit before when we were warming up the audience about what we were going to talk about. And uh, Taylor, could you share a little bit about what you were what you were commenting on, what you were, your focus was at the moment? Um, my focus was on developing authentic relationships in my life and um, just my thoughts that I have to be my most authentic self if I want to the relationships that I have in my life to also be just as authentic. Um, just also talking about, I feel like a little bit, you have to be vulnerable to, to develop those, which isn't always easy, but mm. they're worth it for sure. <laughs> we to, were, to we make, were actually talking about that earlier. To make yourself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, uh, Robin, you can chime in please on that topic. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say that, um, to be authentic is to make myself vulnerable, open myself up, and um, really kind of be more in truth, um, which is sometimes a scary place to be. Scary place to be. That seems to be a common theme today uh, <laughs> about courage, about dealing with fear. Robin? Well, you know, I was thinking about, you know, how we were discussing the, you know, the authentic, being authentic to yourself, and we originally started talking about it with relationships and my first thought was towards you know you know loving relationships but then I also started thinking about like relationships with friends mm -hmm. and it, it I reminded me of and then we talk, started talking about losing things um and making choices you know based off of you know you being who you are and being true to yourself and how you know I had one situation where I fortunately didn't have to lose anything but then I was thinking about how in another situation I did end up losing thing and in the long run I don't really regret it at all. So I do think it is important to be able to know yourself, be authentic to yourself and accept what comes of it. So when we're talking about making choices, ladies, we're talking about making a choice on something which means that other things are going to be left out. And Sometimes we don't want to do that, do we, Stephanie? No, I think it can be easy to kind of get single-minded um, about something. You bet. You bet, absolutely. And when we get single-minded, we became laser-focused. And quite often what we talk about is being laser-focused is having that expert's mind, okay? Like the racehorse with the blinders on. They can do one thing, do it well. Uh, however, they don't open themselves up to possibilities. And sometimes we're so focused on a particular goal or a particular desire that we don't see the shooting stars and the other beautiful wonders and the technicolor of creation around us. What would you have to comment on that, Taylor? I think just for me, I feel like sometimes in order to do that, though, you have to slow yourself down. Um, because I think a lot of people, like you said, I don't know, the thought of a racehorse is like everyone's trying to get somewhere, get to that goal or get to the next thing. And you can't see everything else in all of its um, glory, if you will. If if you're running by it, you have to take your time and um, look at everything around you. And then that's when you realize how amazing, um, I think, I don't know, pretty much anything is. <laughs> when we talk about paying attention on purpose, and I know that, Stephanie, you and I have talked about a Latin term before called the festina lente, which is make haste slowly. Hmm. Make haste slowly. I see you nodding your head. <laughs> yeah, I think what, what Taylor said, we need to slow ourselves down. I think a lot of us spend so much time either having anxiety about the future, having uh, regrets about the past that we 
we spend too much time either in tomorrow or too much time in yesterday, and we don't we we fail to to stop and smell the roses today. And indeed, I don't know if you've uh, heard the term time traveling recently, uh, Robin. Oh, actually, I was just going to ask you what time it was. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> and I think that's kind of where this all goes. I mean, um, it is. It's very easy to live in fear of the future and anxiety of the future. It's also very easy to live in anxiety over the past, over things that you've done in fear of what consequences they can have in the future, instead of just <laughs> focusing on what's in front of you. And I think sometimes it's when you take the time to focus on what's in front of you, that's when you learn who you really are, what, you know, what is important to you. So what you're talking about when we're time traveling with our frequent flyer miles <laughs> to the past and the future with these brief layovers in the present, when where we are truly at, and that's when we get to know each other. So, uh, Taylor, what would you have to somebody say to somebody who was time traveling? I think... For me, I would say take a minute, just stop, just stop, stop whatever you're doing, just stop it, take a deep breath and just like become aware of where you are at that exact point in time, no matter where it is, if whether it's a good situation, a bad situation, just, just like regroup yourself. And then it's, I feel like it just happens naturally then because if you really are trying to pay attention to where you're at at that exact moment, good, bad, or ugly, then you're not looking at the past. You're not looking at the future. You're just being with what is at that exact point in time. And um, not necessarily easy always, but it's kind of comforting if you know where you're at. I know that uh, Stephanie, Robin, and uh, Taylor, we all we all want things to be perfect and we all want things to be we all want instant gratification and we all want things to be just perfect right now mm -hmm. however what what we are all talking about is being able to accept the fact that maybe everything mm -hmm. isn't all right just mm -hmm. right now everything isn't just exactly the way you want it to be however you're prepared to deal with that mm -hmm. how did you how did you develop that stephanie <laughs> <laughs> you you actually had a very profound impact on me um, I believe we were at uh, Phipps one day, and it was, well, you know, kind of, what time is it? And what did I do but look at my watch? And, uh, you know, we finally realized, well, it's, it's right now, and it is only ever right now. And then the other question was, well, where are you? And, of course, I'm, well, I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm at Phipps Conservatory. But, no, I'm, I'm, you know, the answer is I'm right, I'm right here. It is only ever right here and right now. And and when I start to find myself getting a little wonky in my mm -hmm. brain, I I try to bring myself back to that. Miss Robin? I just I just you know, I think when I think about your the time traveling and your term you know, your question is what time is it and where where are you? You know, I remember you, as a, when I was a PA student with you, I, was, I feel like it was pretty much drilled into my brain every day. And it became such a natural way of thinking. And I started to be able to think that way. But I remember having, I really noticed the truth in it when um, one, my, one, my grandfather passed away. And my grandmother was very upset. And she kept just living in the past. And she was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to I wanna die. I want to go be with, you know, with, you know, your grandfather and whatnot. And I remember flat out saying to her, Nana, what time is it? It was right mm -hmm. now where you were right here. You're here with your grandkids and your daughters. And you need to, you can miss, you can have all you want, but you need to accept that you have so much right here in front of you. And, and it was so funny because then I thought about you and I was like, oh, wow, look, I did learn stuff from Jim. <laughs> and now I'm using it on my grandmother. So, I mean, it is such an important concept to keep in mind. However, it's, it's, it is a fairly simple one, is it not? Oh. Yes. Yes. I think so. So most people look for complex answers to their life problems, do they not? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we figure that it can't be good unless it's really complex. It's like buying something that, unless it's really expensive, it can't be any good. Uh, you know, my gosh, 
something for $75 has to work better than something for 50. <laughs> <laughs> However, that, that isn't, that isn't often the truth. So quite often we outsmart ourselves. Do we not, uh, Stephanie? Oh yes. Oftentimes my brain and my mind are my, my own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. So how, how have you been able to simplify things in your life and deal with life's just right in front of you? Um, well, a lot of mindfulness actually is, has helped me to learn to accept exactly where I am, accept my shortcomings, um, come to know that I'm a lot more powerful than, mm -hmm. than I gave myself credit for. And I can actually kind of move forward in life, um, in a much better place. I, I just, you know, but mindfulness has really helped me with that. And when we talk about those words of power, I am I am. I'm much more interested in what you are rather than what you believe you're not or what other people uh, perceive that you're not. I'm interested in, in every single person saying the word, those power words, I choose. I choose not necessarily to choose the most impactful moments in their life, but I choose to wear sandals in the morning, hearing those words out loud. Do you remember the first time that you heard your recorded voice played back to you, Taylor? Um, not probably the exact moment, sure. but, um, yeah, I wasn't a fan, to be honest. <laughs> so how did you, how did the sound of your own recorded voice hear, how did you hear that, Stephanie? What did you think? Um, I've heard my recorded voice before. Mm -hmm. I think I sound funny, but, uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I understand that we all sound different in our own minds right. than we, than we do to Indeed. other people. Indeed. And uh, Robin, do you remember the first time you heard your voice played back to you? Oh, of course. Uh, I mean, I'd, like Stephanie, I'd heard it before, um, even before I started doing uh, podcasts and things like that. And I always, I always go, that's not my voice. That's my cousin's voice. That's not me. So it's something that we're not comfortable with. We're not comfortable hearing that. We're not comfortable dealing with it. Is that me? Well, maybe I don't like that. Maybe I don't like who I am. Okay, so the idea here is what we're trying to do. We're trying to connect the dots, and quite often what we have to do is disconnect to connect. We disconnect from the people, places, things, circumstances, and events that interfere and hinder our life and hinder our development. Okay, the idea here, it's okay to be good to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be good to yourself, as long as it's not at the real expense of another. Okay, so, and again, I'm going to challenge all three of you to be mentors, to model behavior for particularly young girls, young women. Uh, what did, what would you have to say about that charge, Taylor, that I'm giving you? Um, it's, I guess, kind of a big task, but um, I think... Well, first of all, I accept. Second of all, um, I think that it's just teaching. It's just teaching people how to be comfortable with themselves, and you don't have to prove anything to someone else. Um, and just, I think, really appreciating what you have and know what you have to offer other people. Kind and of a it's thing. and it's simply doing the right thing, is it not, Stephanie? Yeah. Is it that? Is it that hard? It, no, it's it's definitely doing the right thing, being nice to people, being compassionate to people, but also letting people know that they are enough. I think a lot of people go through life thinking, "I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with me. I need to fill a void somehow in order to be a better person." And, um, you know, deep down, each one of us, like you had said earlier, we're, we're each uh, a spiritual being having a human experience. And, you know, that and alone, individually, you are enough. Mm. Robin? I think the, you know, the important thing is, you know, just being yourself and being true to yourself and showing that, you know, to these younger girls that, it's okay for them to be themselves too. Uh, we were having an interesting conversation earlier um, about you know people not wanting to open up because it's not the cool thing to do, <laughs> and people change who they are and what they think because it's not their thoughts aren't what is accepted. It's the complete opposite. And when you you know you learn 
to know yourself and be happy with yourself, that's when you know you can go forward and be like, well, I used the Star Wars thing because it was on your wall. I was like, I like Star Wars. I don't care if everybody <laughs> else around me doesn't like Star Wars. That's me and I'm happy with it. And you learn to do what makes you happy. So <laughs> what you three are talking about is taking that mask off. Mm -hmm. Taking the masks yes. off yep. and keeping it off. Yep. Walking through life and saying, here I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am here and it is right now. And like mm -hmm. Taylor said, this is my authentic self. Mm -hmm. Your Going. authentic self. Absolutely. So thank you all so much uh, for being here today. And I'm going to not only challenge you, I'm going to challenge all of our listeners out there to take those masks off to be your authentic self. Remember, fear is only, excuse me, courage is only the ability to deal with fear. It's the ability to deal with fear. Everyone has fear. It's something that can be overcome. Remember, just the emotions, thoughts, and feelings are just that. It's what our reaction is to them that causes all the issues. Until then, be kind to yourself. Be kind to another. Forgive yourself. Forgive another. Namaste. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com, where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, Click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. Fishing Without Bait is a production of Namaste Holistic Counseling, PC.